One day, while traveling the road to the northernmost border of the map, we pass through a tight ravine being patrolled by a Mr. Gutsy. Attention! Attention all citizens! A mandatory curfew is in effect! Repeat! A mandatory curfew is in effect! Return to your homes and await further instructions! Halt! Civilian! A mandatory curfew is in effect! Return to your home immediately! Uh, curfew? By order of Provisional Governor Grant, a state of martial law has been declared. Under the terms of the Martial Law Act, Section 12.J, those refusing to comply with a curfew order are to be pacified. Repeat, will you comply? The gutsy hero is referring to Lieutenant Governor Graham, whose terminal we find in the Massachusetts State House. The backstory on this curfew is that due to the scarcity of fossil fuels and the increased prices for getting bare necessities like food, there were lots of protests and even riots in the streets of Boston. Lieutenant Governor Graham used the crisis to extend the length of his governorship. Massachusetts governors have a four-term limit, and as Lieutenant Governor, he was already filling in for the real governor who had either been killed or abdicated but he didn't want to give up power. So instead of abiding by term limits, he got rid of them and refused to leave as acting governor. Many of his own employees and the people of Boston saw this as the man trying to seize power, which only made the riots worse. And so Lieutenant Governor Graham instituted this curfew. What we find here is a robot that's been trying to enforce that same curfew instituted by the man 200 years ago. We have a number of options. We can comply. All right. I'm going. Cooperation acknowledged. Thank you. But after complying, if we get too close to him... Curfew violation detected. Commencing Fighting. pacification. Great. We can try to reason with the robot and tell him the war is over. <sighs> this is pointless. The war is over. Irrelevant. Repeat. Will you comply? Will you comply? 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 Loop detected. Error. Error. I think that's one of my favorite dialogue scenes in any of the random encounters we've explored so far. Or we can pass a speech check to convince him that we're an important military official. Let me through. I'm on important military business. Analyzing vocal patterns. Confidence interval, 60%. Affirmative. You may pass. Or we can simply say no. Get out of my way. Under the terms of the Martial Law Act, Section 12.J, those refusing to comply with a curfew order are to be pacified. Repeat, will you comply? No. Target has refused to comply! Commencing <laughs> This is episode four in my series on the random encounters of Fallout 4. In order to make every gameplay completely unique, Bethesda created random encounter hotspots all over the Commonwealth. If you happen to save right before discovering a random encounter hotspot, you can reload that save and farm that same hotspot for all of its random encounters. I shared dozens of them with you in my past three videos, and in this video, we'll revisit some of those same hotspots, but I'll be showing you a number of new ones that I found. The first is in Malden Center. If you leave the MedTech building and then follow the road north, northwest into town, we find a three-way intersection, and it is here where we can stumble upon a fluid random encounter. The fluid encounters are a unique pool of encounters where the people or enemies we encounter are constantly moving. The next spot is just north of this. If we follow the road out of Malden and then take the northwest fork towards the General Atomics Galleria, we find another fluid encounter in the middle of the road. This one is just east of Dark Hollow Pond. 
The next hot spot is on the Beantown Brewery Bridge. This is a choke point random encounter where the encounter will block your path along a narrow road you have to pass through. We usually find these on bridges or in ravines. It's on the middle of the bridge between Beantown Brewery and the Cambridge Police Station. The next is a campsite random encounter. These are stationary. The people don't move or block your way. It's easy to walk right past them. This one is on the eastern side of the locks, just north of Forest Grove Marsh. And I found three hotspots in the northeasternmost corner of the map. Starting at Parsons Creamery, if we walk due east towards Coastal Cottage, we can follow a dry riverbed until we see a deathclaw den to the right and a hillside to the northeast. If we climb the hillside, we find another campsite random encounter hotspot overlooking the Makra fish packing plant. This location is northwest of Coastal Cottage, equidistant between the Parsons Creamery and Coastal Cottage. The next one is really close. If you travel due east of Coastal Cottage, we find a bridge leading to the Makra fish packing plant. On this bridge is a big red tanker, and this is a potential location for a choke point random encounter. And the final one is if we take the road north from Coastal Cottage in the fish packing plant. This road borders the northernmost boundary of the map, and it passes through a ravine. This is another choke point random encounter location, and it's here where we found the Mr. Gutsy. It's about equidistant between Makra Fish Packing, Coastal Cottage, and Parsons Creamery, but it's kind of far out there. There's no map marker that's really close by. Our next encounter happens at this very choke point. Here I am approaching from the west, the Parsons Creamery side. We see three people standing in the middle of the road, blocking our path. You look like you could use a little pick-me-up. Am I right? Who are you? I'm Stash, your friendly traveling chems dealer. I don't mind the crew. They're just overprotective. Stash? How'd you get that name? Ah, eh, parents on chems. But hey, it suits me. So, what'll it be? Take a look. Two people? That's a pretty small crew. Yep. There's Simon, loyal employee and customer, and his sister, Lexa. She's more disgruntled. Wants her brother off the chems. But enough about them. Let's get down to some business, shall we? Depends on what you're selling. Whatever you need to put that extra oomph in your day. Let's see what you got. Exactly what you need. Stash has a small selection of chems. It's honestly disappointing considering her name. We find a better selection from some of the static hard to find merchants in the Commonwealth, many of whom I covered in my video on the topic that you can watch here. Stash travels with two bodyguards. The first is Lexa. Hi. Don't try anything. What are you guys doing out here? We work for Stash. Wherever she goes, we go. Quit being so paranoid. Hey, this paranoia's what keeps us alive. Yeah, whatever. I'll do what I want. Won't be saying that once you're dead. I think someone needs to get moving. Don't worry. I'm not gonna try anything. Oh, sure. That's what they all say before pulling a gun. And the second is her brother, Simon. <clears throat> Better not be here to waste our time. What are you guys doing out here? Working. Gotta earn those calves, right? Jet don't pay for itself. Relax. I'm not here to cause any problems. Good to hear. Never know who you'll encounter around and about in the Commonwealth. I won't be any trouble. Better not be. Stash takes care of a lot of people, including me. We'd be on you like rads on ghouls. Quit wasting my time. I think you're the one wasting mine. Get out of here. Many days later, if we happen to pass through a fluid random encounter hotspot, we bump into Stash again. Hey. Well, look who it is. Glad to see the wasteland hasn't swallowed you up. Interest you in a little something to liven up your day? Where are you heading? Everywhere and nowhere. Staying in one place will get you killed these days. Especially if you're a chems dealer. Hmm. Just a matter of time till someone tries to take what's yours. Lexa warns me that someone could be Simon one day. So customers are easy to come by? Oh sure, steady ones now, that's the challenge. The Commonwealth has its dangers in a typical lifespan ain't what it used to be. I bet they're just lining up to sample your goods. Ooh, what I wouldn't give for steady customers. Simon's about all I got and he works for me. But now Lexa wants me to cut him off. What's Lexa's deal with Simon? She just wants her brother off drugs, but what can I say? Jet keeps him sharp. He does a good job, so I can't complain. 
We have two choices here to either convince her to allow Simon to feed his drug habit or to side with Lexa, Simon's sister, to cut him off and prevent him from feeding his habit. Ultimately, this choice has no effect in the game. Seems Simon's doing okay. Maybe you should just leave him be. My thoughts exactly. Just gotta keep Lexa off my back. She thinks he'll get us killed someday. Lexa's right. You should get Simon to quit. In the end, I know you're right. You know that whole mixin' business with pleasure thing? I just gotta figure out how to go about it. Well, Simon won't like it, but it'll get me back in Lexa's good graces at least. Let's see what you got. Exactly what you need. She has exactly the same inventory the second time around. I gotta go. Until next time. This time, however, neither Lexa nor Simon hey. have very much to say. Many days later, if we happen upon a campsite random encounter hotspot, we find Stash's corpse lying on the ground. We see three beds here, enough for Stash, Lexa, and Simon, but we only find Stash's body. But she appears to have been robbed. Examining her inventory, we find some caps, stim packs, and Radaway, but all of the addictive chems that were on her vendor inventory are gone. We find a duffel bag nearby, but inside all we find is ammunition. What happened to Stash? How did she die? And what happened to her bodyguards, Lexa and Simon? We learn the answer while passing through a fluid random encounter hotspot. We get attacked by a small band of raiders. But we realize that one of the raiders is Simon. And suddenly we understand exactly what happened. Simon attacked and killed Stash. Either because we convinced her to cut him off and in anger he killed her for her chems, or because we convinced her to continue to feed his addiction. And his appetite for chems became so insatiable that he just couldn't wait for another hit. And so he killed Stash to take her entire inventory. He then joined up with a band of raiders, raiders who wouldn't judge him for his chem usage, and raiders who would help him steal the chems he so craves. We never learn what happens to his sister, Lexa. Did she help her brother murder Stash? Or did Simon murder her too and we just don't find the body? Or it's possible that Simon's sister, Lexa, could have killed Stash because Stash wouldn't stop selling to Simon. We don't really know, but I think a likely explanation is that Lexa couldn't prevent Simon from killing Stash, and then either Lexa left him out of disgust and shame, or Simon abandoned her to get away from her constant nagging. This is one of the most elaborate random encounters in the entire game. It spans no fewer than four random encounters, which means that experiencing the entire story is pretty rare, considering most of us fast travel and don't use the roads. Next, sometimes we see a girl in a yellow dress walking around with a huge sentry bot. Hi there. Get it while I got it. Are you buying or just in the way? Up for a trade? I got toys for all ages. Something you need? If you're not a customer, you're trouble. So what'll be? You out here all by yourself? Hardly. Gus looks out for me. So I don't get any ideas. Now, are you buying or not? Maybe later. What? Don't trust a kid trader? Jeez, lady. Not right now. Whatever. I got better stuff to do. Let me think it over. The last guy who said that wound up dead in a ditch. I bet he regretted not buying that gun when he had the chance. Let's see what you got. Just don't take too long. It makes Gus twitchy. Cat's inventory is small, her largest tab is the junk tab, and the best thing I found on here was some military grade duct tape where we can get some ballistic weave. Otherwise it was pretty disappointing. That's all Cat has to say unless we decide to kill her robot Gus. You killed my only friend. We killed her best friend. Oh no, who's gonna protect Cat now? Sometimes we find a gang of raiders escorting a vault dweller.
was just starting to have fun. Thanks a lot. I'm never leaving Vault 81 again. Count on me. I've got to get back to Vault 81. This is the last time I'm volunteering for one of these expeditions. If I get back to Vault 81, I'm never leaving again. With that, he marks the location of Vault 81 on our map, if we haven't found it yet, and he races back home to his vault. His pink Pip-Boy was just a missing texture glitch in my game. His Pip-Boy looks normal. Sometimes, we find a big, bright yellow giddy-up buttercup standing alone by itself on a hillside. And on the ground next to it is Arlen's note. For a child who needs it, Arlen Glass. We only find this random encounter if we meet Arlen Glass at the slog and complete his personal quest. If we do, we immediately understand the significance of this giddy up buttercup, and it's a really touching way to end his story in the Commonwealth. I covered the story of Arlen Glass in my video called The Toy Maker, which you can watch here. As we learned in my past three videos, we can find a myriad of enemies at these random encounter hotspots. Yao Guai battling super mutants. A death claw battling a mongrel. A death claw all by itself. Feral ghouls standing over the corpse of a gunner. This is a treasure random encounter because on the gunner's corpse, we find gunner's note. Like the junky treasure random encounter that I covered in a previous episode, this one sends us to loot a weapon from a chest somewhere on the Commonwealth. In this example, we're being sent to Walden Pond to clear out the raider gang Walter Twee's Bear and Whiplash. I covered their story and the story of Walden Pond in a video that you can watch here. Sometimes we find a rad scorpion fighting a raider. Watch the singer! <laughs> That's a mistake you'll ever make. Find anything useful on him? And sometimes we find a band of wandering faction soldiers. These will only be hostile depending on our relationship with that faction in our game. In this example, I stumbled upon the Brotherhood of Steel, but they were enemies in my game, so I was kill on sight. But we also have a chance to run into the Minutemen. I'm presuming we can find the Railroad and Institute as well, but I haven't found their random encounters yet. We can find a caravanner with his or her Brahmin. Hi. You hear about that farm run by ghouls? Isn't that something? This guy just serves to update our map with a new location, and it looks like the settler is randomized each time. Sometimes we can bump into Preston Garvey? Hey. Hey, man. I don't think we've met, but your time is impeccable. Preston Garvey, Commonwealth Minutemen. Minutemen? We protect the people at a minute's notice. That's the idea, anyway. You might have heard we're making a comeback. The General sent me to collect donations from concerned citizens like yourself. Help us out, and you can count on the Minutemen to be there when you need us. Can I put you down for, say, a hundred caps? Really? The Minutemen are collecting bribes now? Hey, man. We're just trying to make the Commonwealth a little better for everyone. Isn't that something you're willing to give a little for? Now, come on. It's not that much to ask, is it? At this point, we have a number of options. We can simply inform him that we're the general. Yeah, and I'm the general. Ha! That's a good one. Well, I see you already know about us. No, really. I am the general. Oh, shit. In which case, he runs off. Or we can call him out for his lie. You're not Preston Garvey. Say what, man? The impersonator has the same response to all four of these options. It's charlatans like you that give the Minutemen a bad name. You really need to get a better overcoat. And you forgot to pin up the hat. Still, not bad. Not bad at all. You're not fooling me. Get lost. I know Preston Garvey, and you aren't him. Oh shit. He just turns tail and runs away. Or before outing his lie, we can be hostile and tell him to get lost. Get lost. It's a cruel world when one man can't count on another for help. Stay safe out there. 
in which case he maintains his deception. He walks off, but he refuses to talk with us further. Excuse me. I've got nothing to say to you. Or we can pay him. Sure. That's generous of you, man. You really are one of the good guys, you know. Well, I'd better keep moving. But if you ever need us, you can count on the Minutemen to have your back. But we can always get our money back if we do. Let's do this. I was really disappointed that the real Preston Garvey had nothing to say if he's with us at the time. I even tried exploring his more thoughts dialogue option and he just didn't respond to this at all. And we have a chance to find the final tier four settlement vendor, Doc Anderson. <clears throat> Not many doctors around these days. Should let me take a look at you. What's new, Doc? Nothing that would interest you. Now let's talk about you and your health. Could use some supplies, actually. Let's see what I can spare. Frustratingly, she has boilerplate trader dialogue, and her barter menu is nothing to write home about. However, if our charisma is high enough, and our settlement has enough settlers, and if our settlement has high enough happiness, we'll find an option to recruit her as a permanent vendor in one of our settlements. If we then assign her to a level 3 surgery center, she becomes a tier 4 medical vendor. This greatly improves her inventory. She not only has many more caps to barter with, but she also sells a a Dictol, an incredibly rare chem, and she has a greater supply of Buff Out Jet Medex Mentats and Psycho. I published a video dedicated to all of the random encounter vendors that we can find and send to our settlements. You can watch that video by clicking here. Hi, going to see Doc Anderson? I can't recommend her highly enough. That should take care of you. Just make sure to keep an eye on it and come see me if it doesn't get any better in a few days. Thanks, Doc. You're a lifesaver. Goodbye. We also find new random encounters if we have installed and completed some of the DLCs for Fallout 4. Instead of finding a camped band of automatron robots who had just recently killed some settlers, as we did in a previous video, we can find them out on patrol. And we can sometimes find each of the three Nuka World Raider gangs out on patrol even deep into the Commonwealth. Sometimes they patrol, like the Disciples or the Pack here. Sometimes we find them escorting prisoners. These are usually called pillagers, heading back to Nuka World after a successful slave capturing run. But even as Overboss, and even if the Raiders are neutral, the only way to release the prisoners is to kill the Raiders. And sometimes we find them guarding a location in a choke point, as with the operators here, sometimes on a bridge choke point, or sometimes in a ravine. Don't mean to me. Of course, any of these Nuka World Raiders could be peaceful or hostile, depending on the choices we made in that DLC. And finally, sometimes either in Nuka World or in the Commonwealth, we can find Harvey? Hey, Harvey. Oh, thank God. The Raiders have my fa- Oh, hey boss. Faking injury again? Yeah, guess that's all I'm good at. Since I fooled you, the gang leaders seem to think I've got some sort of special talent. Suckers. You need to be more convincing. Hey, I got you in there, didn't I? One way or another, I'll keep them coming. Keep up the good work, Harvey. I'll keep packing them in. Gauntlet, keep picking them off. Hey, boss. Looks like you really lit this place up. Surprised to hear the operators actually thought they could take you on. Believe me, won't miss them. Speaking of which, have you seen any stragglers? When I clean house, I like to be thorough. Haven't seen any of them since they went for the power plant. There any left. You'd think they'd be smart enough to get as far from Nuka World as they could. I guess this means one less boss to push you guys around. <laughs> I guess that sort of is a victory for us traders. We're better off. We're stronger this way. Ain't no one gonna argue that now. Good riddance. They were weak. As long as it ain't us, I'm happy. Sure is nice to have electrical power around here, though. Should keep us safe. Bring more business to Nuka World. 
And yeah, yeah, I know he didn't do it for us. But the traders feel like it's a real improvement anyway. Do you have anything interesting to say? Or are you just wasting my time? And on that note, I'll just get my ass back to work. Ooh, I'm so glad the traders approve. I was hoping to win their popularity contest. Just thought you'd like to know is all. Don't worry, I'm getting my ass back to work. Quit yapping and get back to work. Don't gotta tell me twice. That's why I did it. It benefits everyone. Yeah, boss. Well, best get back to work. Don't want to look like I'm slacking on the job. Why do you stick around and keep doing this? Are you kidding? If I split, people I know get hurt. I can handle screwing over a stranger, but not people I care about. Are you saying you don't approve of our methods? I'm just saying I'm tired. I'm down with doing whatever it takes to live to see another day. Caring is a mistake, Harv. Makes you weak. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe someday I'll learn that lesson. But for now, I guess I'm stuck here. They're all dead anyway. They just don't know it yet. Well, you're a real ray of sunshine, boss. Guess I'll see you around. Or as overboss, we can set this slave free. Well, I'm the overboss, and I say you're free to go. You... You're serious, aren't you? I ain't gonna say no, and believe me, it'll be a cold day in hell if you see me in the Commonwealth again. And that wraps it up for episode 4 of the Random Encounters of Fallout 4. By now, we've found most of them, but there are still many we have yet to discover. Never fear, I'll keep cracking away to try and find them all, so stay tuned for episode 5. I publish many new videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop. At least I have my thump thump. This was a fan request from viewers who really enjoyed seeing me use Thump Thump, the grenade rifle, during my Caesar's Legion series. This beautiful design comes on shirts in a wide variety of both men's and women's sizes and in a wide array of colors. The design also comes on other products as well, smartphone cases, mugs, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new video.